Alrighty friends, welcome back to another super mega large family style healthy freezer cooking day where we are going to cook up so many meals. We are going to do all the things. Stick with me kid, we're going places, ha ha. Right now, we are going to get, how many pounds is this? About 40 pounds of grass fed, grass finished ground beef going in the roaster ovens to pre-cook for all this cooking that we're cooking up. So this is the meat that I had just bought from a local friend from a cow that they had processed. It was less than $5 a pound. I had set this out from the freezer into the refrigerators last night to start defrosting it and now we're going to get it cooking. And so I decided on this big freezer cooking day that I was going to use my roaster ovens to get this meat cooked as I puttered about and got other things done during the first half of my day here. And it has worked so well here on my island to be able to use my roaster ovens to cook meat or do long broth or just do whatever big projects I need to do. Each of these roaster ovens, I believe they are 22 quarts. And so I get 20 pounds of meat going in each roaster. I also put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of each roaster. And on this big freezer cooking day, my goal was to just get as much done as possible. I knew it was not going to be a 40 meals in one full day kind of freezer cooking day. I knew I had things that were going to take my attention the first half of the day, but I wanted to work smarter, not harder, haha, <laughs> as much as possible, and at least have this meat cooking while I went about my other activities. And I just wanted to see how far we could get. Was it going to be eight meals, 10 meals, 20 meals? I wasn't sure exactly, but I I knew that I needed this meat done to progress any further. I also wanted to get done some very simple classic big batch meals that I knew I could divide down and provide many many meals for my big family over many many weeks. We recently had run through the last of our freezer meals and I had not been able to cook ahead to keep the freezer meal freezer completely stocked up and ready to go, but that's okay. When we needed it, we ate it down. And once it was empty, mama's got busy cooking again. Sometimes I do a couple big batch cooking Sometimes I do a couple big batch freezer meal cooking and get stocked up for potentially 12 to 16 weeks of meals if I need them. And then once it starts to get low, I do a bunch more big cooking. Other times I'm able to do one big freezer cooking time and over several weeks just pick away at getting the freezer filled and then as we eat things down, rotate in new cooking days and just perpetually <laughs> keep it filled. I have had times where I keep it stocked and ready to go and just cycle through things. It just honestly depends on life. And I know everybody here watching, we understand life and how life goes, but these meals are so helpful no matter how simple they are. Let me tell you, being able to go to my freezer and pull out a bag of spaghetti sauce and know that at dinner time all we have to do is noodles is uh, super helpful to this mama, that's for sure. Now, if you wanted to follow along and do a bunch of big batch freezer meals for your family, similar to what I'm doing here as well, if you have even one roaster oven that can really help you get way ahead. Now, I honestly could have probably put about 30 or so pounds of ground beef into each roaster oven. I knew though that I could spread it out over two and I also thought that later I could reuse the roaster ovens that I cook the ground beef in to do some of my freezer meal recipes in. That way I was not getting another pot or any other equipment dirty. I was just reusing what was already being worked with in my kitchen. Now if you don't have a roaster oven you can also batch cook your ground beef in a pot on the stove. I've used a lot of stock pots for big batch meat cooking and I've also done big batch meat cooking in my slow cooker and in my traditional oven. I'm gonna chop up this meat. It has been cooking for a bit. I've been working on some kitchen cleaning and organizing and rearranging. Also, 
bring up different things from the basement that I need for the meals that we're doing. We are totally out of our home canned tomato sauce, but that's okay because we got a bunch of great value sauce we need to use up anyway. So we're going to work on using some of that. I do have home canned corn and home canned beans and home canned potatoes that we're going to be using today also. And I have two loaves of sourdough bread doing their weight <laughs> in the refrigerator. Two more loaves over here on the counter. So we are doing things. I do think our most recent tub of yogurt is about done. So I should get some of that going as well. And I absolutely love this meat masher that a viewer sent to me years and years ago. I know they're available everywhere now. And I really should have more than one because sometimes this is in the wash or sometimes the little head falls off of it. So mama needs to get a few emergency meat mashers. So I'm not looking at my list, but we are gonna need to write it on the whiteboard and we'll go over everything. I'm going to also just do a big batch of sauce, like spaghetti sauce or whatever I wanna use that sauce for. And we're going to do a big batch of chili. Ouch. And we're gonna do a big batch of taco meat. So I'm just thinking all the super simple meals to make life, you love tacos, that's great, good job, to make life as super simple as possible. I do not have a big batch freezer cooking guide available that has these particular, only these recipes in this cooking order. If you're new to all that, I have, I believe, over 20 big batch freezer cooking guides over in my shop. Now what is nice about those is you have the grocery list or the shop your freezers and your pantry at home list and a big batch freezer cooking guide which lists out everything for you to prep and order. If you want to do these meals, you can just follow along in this video and I will also have the recipe links that go back over to my blog that give you all of those details. So it's not as pre planned and thought out other than these are all recipes I have done a million times and I've had to do more mental prep work and such but these recipes are based off of super simple that I can do with my eyes closed also the main thing items that I have on hand so all this ground beef I bought recently from a local friend who had processed some cows and was selling off some extra ground beef. I bought 50 pounds from her, so we're using 40 pounds here. Then many of the vegetables and such are items that I've home canned, and then what I haven't home canned are items from my grocery store in my basement that I have stocked up on items that we are working through and as we get through those my goal is to replace so many of those items with my own home canned foods it's a process it's a journey and we'll get there right and so also when i sat down last night to make my food list i was thinking through what we had available and definitely right now ground beef is something we have available now i don't I have canned chicken and I have canned pork and I do have some already canned ground beef which is super convenient to have on hand but I, I'm not doing a lot of chicken recipes because I don't have a lot of chicken in my freezer right now although in the coming weeks I hope to use many of the cans of home canned chicken in some chicken freezer meal recipes. I've been wanting to do chicken pot pie and such with that also. We're just not doing that today. But dancing around the barn with me, we will be processing a bunch of chickens midsummer. And whenever we do that, I will do a bunch of chicken freezer meals with that meat. And we will can a bunch of our whole grown chicken. Okay, so I have to head outside and do something for about 30 minutes or so, but we do at least have the ground beef going. I'm going to have one of the people who look like me work on getting all the tomato sauce and the diced tomatoes at least dumped into this pot for me because that's something I don't have to stand here and do right now, and that'll be a big help when I come back inside. 
So it's the whole lot a lot of method. We're gonna dump in all those diced tomatoes and all of this tomato sauce. And then these are the home canned potatoes we're gonna use. And then here's some of our home canned black beans and corn that's coming up too. Alrighty, so even though we don't have any seasonings yet on our big mega mama pot of spaghetti sauce, we at least have tomato sauce, plain tomato sauce, and diced tomatoes in there. So I'm thinking through, what color do I want to run in? Maybe I want to make this, actually. Um, so that's going, this ground beef, I haven't checked it here recently, but it's probably done. And so now, I'm just gonna write out my hopes and dreams food project list. I don't think I'm going to get all of this done today. Surprise, surprise. But I know this, and I'm acknowledging it, is 418. And so what we do have done is 40 pounds of ground beef, most likely all the way cooked through all the way, and some sauce already going, and all the things gathered in here. And I don't know if I'm gonna cook until 10 or 11 or nine, we'll see. There's a few things that I need defrosted ground beef for, such as meatloaf, meatloaf minis, and meatballs. So those three things we probably won't get to today, but I'm gonna put them on this list because I'm going to get them done over the next few days. But let's start this list and get going. Well, I'm gonna start with spaghetti sauce since we do have that going. And if I just have the sauce ready, well, you know, you got a bunch of spaghetti sauce prepped and ready to go. There's a lot of different meals besides regular old spaghetti that you can do. And having the sauce where all you have to do is defrost that and do your noodles ready to go is additionally super helpful. So we have that going down. I'm looking for big bulk things I can get cooking while I do other things. So taco meat ready to go. Chili, that's something else we can get going in a pot. Okay. And then to assemble, we're going to have shepherd's pie. We're going to do cabbage lasagna. And then I have that delicious Philly cheese steak casserole. And Travis did chop up two big things of cheese for us the other night. I have since then, I made four 10 by 15 gluten-free lasagnas. We're finishing our second pan of that today and the other two are in the refrigerator. And I did not pre-cook those noodles or anything. Um, I did use a lot of cheese in that is what I wanted to say. So we may have to end up having some more cheese cut. Again, just thinking through so many ground beef things since I just stocked up on a lot of ground beef to get a lot of these freeze from the stones. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the number I like to go with. Alrighty. So next up, let's chop up this meat some more, get that spaghetti sauce seasoned. Then I will get, need to get a pot of chili going. And then I need to get a pot with taco meat in it. And we'll go from there. So on this day, we end up getting 16 freezer meals, like large family style freezer meals, prepped and ready to go and cooked and in the freezer and ready for life <laughs> for life for unexpected and the plan i always like to say we don't tell freezer meals when we need them freezer meals tell us when we need them and i can look at my calendar for the week and i can definitely plan sometimes it is we need freezer meals every night this week some weeks it's okay two or three nights this week we're going to do freezer meals and then maybe one of the other nights i will do some big batch cooking cook something in bulk for us and we will eat that for maybe two dinners and also have some servings left over for lunches i do also get a lot of questions on if i have picky eaters well i will say i'm a real life mama and my family is a real life family and there are are definitely individual humans with individual human preferences now as a mom like most of us moms right I want to make things that my family's going to enjoy but it's very hard to accommodate every single person especially when I have 
a whole city bus full of people. So there might be one or two in particular, and they might have some 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 special request. I will say that those kids um, cough cough are usually around the age five and eight <laughs> or six and eight and you know they might want just noodles with some butter on them. They might not want the sauce. They might just want a little bit of taco meat and they might like you know lots of extra sour cream on shelves and kind of do like nachos with cheese and sour cream and such on there. Uh, but I will say that over time but I will say over time, even with these three tried and true classic recipes of big batch spaghetti, big batch taco meat, and big batch chili, all of my children as they grow and as they learn to like mama's ground beef in different varieties, all of my older kids and adult kids and other family members love my spaghetti and my chili and my taco meat, I don't take it personally when they're younger. They're gonna make their own decisions, that's okay. And I'll always leave an option, you know, if someone absolutely doesn't what, whatever it is I may be serving, they are always more than welcome to make themselves a sandwich, to get themselves some fruit, to, okay, you don't like what mama made? Well, make yourself something else. Uh, but I don't personally make several different dinners to accommodate different family preferences. Now, as you know, I do have some things that I'm already accommodating. You know, I swing many of my personal mama meals to be trim, healthy, mama friendly, which I know is not something all my viewers do, but I also know I do have a group of moms that have followed me for a while or have found me in recent days that follow the THM plan. And so even with these meals in front of me, this spaghetti sauce I can have on squash or zucchini or even cauliflower rice. The taco meat I can have with my low carb mission wraps. There's different accommodations I can make for myself. I'm still eating the same food, but I may just tweak it and have it a different way. Like I might have some of the chili, but I might have it on a bed of lettuce. I'll just do different things. Also, I have some family members who it's been doctor recommended that uh, different ones are low gluten or gluten free, maybe for a season, maybe for a nice long time. And so many things I am doing in my household at this time are leaning more gluten-free and I'll continue to share more about that in the coming days. So there's already accommodations and special ways and different ways that I'm doing things. So back on the subject of picky eaters, most of my family members, most of the time, eat exactly what I've made. They may make some of their special preferences. Like, as I mentioned, I might have some younger folks that just don't like the sauce on their noodles. But I will say, one of my adult children who will remain nameless, haha, -ha, when they were at that same age, they also only ate butter on their noodles. And fast forward 15 years and they eat mama's spaghetti sauce. <laughs> so again, I don't take it personal. There's obviously enough food here for a big family. And so people are free to adjust on their personal preferences if they would like. Now that spaghetti sauce is simmering. I'm gonna consider that done though, but we will also be using that sauce when we do the cabbage lasagnas. And I was just thinking, just to, you know, not dirty another dish, I think the taco meat and the chili, we'll just use the roasters for those. Look at us doing things. And this roaster's meat was good and done. This still had some pink and need like quite a bit. It still needs to cook a bit longer, but this one's turned off now. All right, so this meat is cooked. That is going well. I have some meat that has drained over there and the draining, the grease is very minimal because this is organic ground beef and it's usually very lean naturally. So what I am doing here is I've left, now I'm eyeballing this, okay? This looks like it could be three to four pounds. 
and this that I've left in here. This is going to be our base for our chili. And then I have some removed. And then I'm going to remove some from this one also. Just gonna remove the meat like this for now. I have a green one. I've got my small one there. I don't know where my big one is. I don't know why they would be missing. But yet again, you know what? I think my green one's actually over in my gardening box. Yep, makes sense to me. So anyway, however we do it, the meat that I'm removing is gonna be for our various nine by 13 meals that we're making. Um, or I guess not the cabbage lasagna because I have that sauce made already. Anyway, we're going to get some meat out and we're going to figure things out and pull it together. That's what we're and so what I'm doing now is I am scooping out my meat into my little colander. I couldn't find my super mega giant one <laughs> on this day. Uh, I have my little one and that is sitting inside of another mixing bowl. And that way I'm just able to easily drain down this ground beef. And then once it is drained, I can dump it in another meal that I'm cooking or I can dump it in another big bowl to use for many of these recipes coming up. And now I'm just, just kind of swinging it from side to side there and getting the, the grease off of it. And now I am going to town. I am going to open so many cans here right now. And in my colander, I am dumping canned corn and beans and chili. Actually, I don't think there's any, was any corn there. Hold on, mama, hold on. No corn, no corn, but a variety of beans. And I am working on making taco meat or chili. Which one is it gonna be? I think it's my taco meat. This is my from the future, haha, uh, remembering exactly what I did. So yes, they're in that roaster. I'm watching this video, I'm with us now. I always had to think back, what was I cooking on this day? That was taco meat there in that roaster oven. And so I did a variety of canned goods. Now, as you know, I do have a grocery store in my basement and I do have my children bring up a variety of cans that we can use. Wait a minute, this is chili. <laughs> That's right. This is chili. That's the tomatoes going in there. See, we can play along. And so because I was out of my home canned tomato sauce and we have been working down our stash of store-bought canned beans, I had them bring me up so many cans that they could and I'm just I still have quite a few meals to make through and to use these store-bought canned goods in. Which again, no shame in this mama game, no shame in store-bought cans whatsoever. Obviously, I felt it was so important for my large family. My goal has been to have a year supply of food storage in advance that we could rotate through and replace. But my hopes and dreams, you know, it's the, the Jamarel Mama Heart quandary. I've also have had this homesteading dream for over 15 years that I've been slowly pecking away at while also growing my huge online business that supports my family of 11, which brought my husband home full-time over 10 years ago. I've been doing a lot, okay? I've accomplished a few things. I think during this whole uh, past 12 years, I have had five more babies for, let's see here. I have to think through the ages of my kids. My 12 year old I had when I was hobby blogging and within a year after that, it took off with my limited knowledge at the time and quickly became a full-time business. And then I was pregnant with my 10 year old. So yes, I've had five babies between blogging and then doing YouTube and I had four babies before any of this started. So again, uh, my my entry animal was chickens 15 years ago and i really wanted to work on 
doing as many things from home as possible then. But I've been a working mom and a business mom too. And so that's where we enter in now, hopes and dreams. I've decided to just go for it and to challenge myself to use what we have at home and to use up many of my store-bought items that I have and to replace those items with our own home canned, home grown, home raised meat and fruits and vegetables. None of this is overnight. I think, I think maybe in two years, you let me know what you think. I think maybe in two years I can be where I want to be. And where do I want to be? Well, I would love to have two Jersey cows that we always have one in milk in that we are making all of our own dairy products and having our own homegrown milk. I would love to continue raising all this poultry that we've been raising. We're in our fourth season now raising poultry as far as for meat. In two more years, I would like to be much farther in our pork processing and pork raising. Now, beyond that, I would not mind having a calf that we rotate through and raise for meat. We'll see though, that's not on my radar, raising out a calf to a cow to then be butchered. But I think futuristically, that is something that we could do in raising our own beef humanely here on our own property and not relying on beef from the grocery store. But what we've been doing for several years is we have been buying our ground beef from JNL Green Farm. And actually I say ground beef, our, our, a whole cow at a time, from JNL Green Farm in Edinburgh, Virginia. That's our local small farm that does the grass-fed, grass-finished beef, and they do poultry there. They also do forested pork. They offer a lot. So when we have not, and as we're not able to raise and produce certain things on our small homestead of around seven acres, we help support their farm and buy their meat from them as well. And here I am working on breaking up my cabbage. We're going to boil this up on the stove and we are going to use these cabbage leaves in our cabbage lasagna which I've heard from many of you who've made my cabbage lasagna and you love it if you have not made it yet and if you are looking for something I mean you can swing this so many ways it is low carb it is gluten free it is sugar free now it is not dairy free but if you are a dairy free person you know that you can use your dairy free cheese and your dairy free substitute as you're able. You know what your particular dietary needs are. So there are different ways that you can swing that as well. But the cabbage lasagna is just, it's absolutely delightful. This mama loves it. And I'm also over here, I had cooked about four cups of rice in my Instant Pot. And I'm adding that to my taco meat to stretch it. You don't have to use brown rice. You can use jasmine rice or white rice, whatever you have available. And so I'm just adding that to my taco meat. My family never knows any different. And that is just going to stretch our taco meat even further. And I've also received a lot of questions as I've been sharing more about doing different gluten-free adaptations for my family. Many people have been asking and wondering if anyone in my household has celiac disease. So I don't think that anyone has celiac. However, I don't know for sure. We are doing testing and we are under several doctors care and we have um, the potential for some folks to be gluten intolerant which is handled different obviously than celiac disease with celiac I know that there needs to be separate toasters and you know a lot of things kept separate in the kitchen I did hear from one viewer the other day in the comments of a video and she was sharing how she keeps things separate for her daughter as far as, you know, a different butter dish and different peanut butter and such. Uh, so we are seeing gluten intolerance. And then there's also, with some other folks, another health situation where the doctor has just suggested we, we can, we're free to try low, lower gluten, 
or no gluten. So it's going to benefit a different health situation, which is also not celiac. So as of right now, I'm just handling everything in our household in general as gluten intolerances, not celiac disease. But again, I do have several close friends that juggle that and make that work for their family and handle that very serious medical condition as well. As you know, with gluten intolerances, it can make people very, very painfully ill. And it's not just um, a mild tummy ache, it's debilitating. So debilitating that it makes a mama make some changes and that's what this mama is doing. Maybe for a small season, maybe for longer term. Thank you for following along with me as I cook and meet the needs for my big family. Alrighty, so we've got a little over 20 quarts of chili here and I'm looking at this as this being four different large family meals for us because again, I feed at least 11 at most meals all day, every day. And so for the meal, that could be some portions that are leftovers then. Hey, Benjamin, go shut that green door so we don't have to hear the bird. Real quick. Thank you. No. Okay, we go back just a little bit. So for the, so for each meal though, there could definitely be some leftovers for the following day's lunch or maybe even two dinners. But will this be eight meals or four? I'm gonna count it as four and hopefully there will be servings left to get some other, to, and hopefully there'll be some servings left along with that. But as far as me doing my math on how many freezer meals I'm doing today, I'm counting this as four large family dinners. And same thing with our taco meat, but I also just added all that rice to, to bulk it up. I'm gonna count this as four different large family taco dinners. Now for our big pot here, I believe this is my 30 quart pot. And then I have, what is it? A 40 or 60 quart <laughs> downstairs, I forget. But this pot, this is about 25 quarts or so of spaghetti sauce, and we will be using about five of these roughly. You know, we're doing our late night math here, haha. -ha. We'll be using about five quarts or so in our cabbage lasagna, and our cabbage leaves are done. We'll assemble those next, and then the rest of this sauce will be bagged, and hopefully at least four large family spaghetti dinners or whatever, I mean, you know, I could get inspired to do other lasagnas or bake ziti or just anything that needs a good spaghetti meat sauce. And so here I am mixing up part of my sauce, my cheese layers for in my lasagna. Now, of course, ricotta cheese with some eggs is fantastic. I did not have any ricotta, but what I had was a few containers of the Nancy's probiotic low fat cottage cheese and I had some containers of sour cream. Now I understand that when the lasagnas are baked, that's going to kill a lot of the probiotic benefits. It's just a sour cream that I have on hand because I eat it every day. Sorry, not sour cream. <laughs> I have the sour cream too, but the cottage cheese. I eat the Nancy's uh, low-fat cottage cheese and the full-fat cottage cheese. It just depends on how I'm personally swinging my meals. I do those every day. Um, so I am mixing up a mixture there that is part sour cream, part low fat cottage cheese and several farm fresh eggs and I blended those together. I also added some seasoning to that, some onion powder and garlic powder and salt and pepper. And I do a layer of that mixture. And now for extra fun on one of these pans in particular, I had just enough pepper jack left to do the sliced cheese layers in pepper jack. 
So that was very good. And then the other three cabbage lasagnas got the provolone slices that Travis had done when I did the gluten-free lasagnas a few nights before. And so I do my spaghetti sauce at the bottom and then I layer on top of that a layer of the already cooked cabbage leaves. And yes, this cooks just fine. Well, it freezes great. It defrosts with no problem. I bake it in the oven with no problem. And it is just absolutely a delicious faux lasagna. So this one, I don't know what happened exactly, but I wasn't able to do two full proper layers. So that's okay. Just saying I've kind of put a little bit more cheese sauce on there and I'm covering the top with our thin sliced cheese. And that'll be that. I don't think I'll remember whenever I defrost this and we go to eat it. Be okay. And so I continue on with my cabbage leaves and my different lasagna layers, just trying to stretch these ingredients and make as many as possible. I eyeballed it pretty well, and I was thinking I could get four 9 by 13 pans, and that's exactly what we get accomplished. I used one big head of cabbage that I got at my local small town general store, and I did in my refrigerator, in my little cheese bucket in there, I did find a bag that had, uh, and there it is right there, it had um, it's about a quarter or so full of shredded cheese from some other big batch cooking projects I have done in in the past here the cheese was still bopping around here at the house so I'm using that up in some of these lasagnas as well there's the pepper jack one and the parmesan one and then these other two I ran out of the provolone so I just did provolone at the top I'm giving myself all kinds of check marks now that is my cooking list that I was going to slowly pick away at over several big batch cooking times I knew I would not get all those done on this particular day, especially since, you know, I didn't start until uh, a little after four and we went until a decent time. Now what I am doing here is I am putting my chili, it has cooled, and I am putting it in my labeled Ziploc bags and these are going to go down into my freezer. And then we are also going to do the same thing with the taco meat. We are going to put those in four labeled Ziploc freezer bags. And then we are going to go, go for gold, yay! We are going to go through the spaghetti sauce and put the spaghetti sauce in four labeled freezer bags. And I freeze those on a baking sheet so they don't freeze to the little wire racks in the freezer and then I am able to once they're frozen solid and flat I can take them off of the baking sheets get my baking sheets back for kitchen projects and just stack the bags from there so there's the chili and then we have the spaghetti sauce and then we have the taco meat I do save that little bit of chili there that's left and just put it in a container for lunches for the next day there's our labeled cabbage lasagnas and now we forgot to write the name on the foil so we just did a little sticky note label and then put that in our plastic wrap layer that works just fine and then here's our chili that's going to be for our lunches after church the following day and we have folks who like to do their chili many different ways and now I'm going to work on getting our taco meat bagged up as well so if you are interested in any of these easy big batch freezer meal recipes just look down in the description below and I will have the links that will take you directly to the blog where the recipes are are there available if you are interested in buying my well-loved big batch freezer meal guides you can also look below you can always use the special coupon code hello 20 to take 20 percent off your first order at the shop.largefamilytable.com i am so glad that i got these 16 freezer meals big batch cooked up and in my freezer ready to go my family will be using these I would say over the next 12 or so weeks as needed. This is not the only freezer meals that I will do. I will definitely be doing more freezer meals to add variety to our freezer meal freezer. I want to get some more lunch freezer meals done. Those are so convenient. Definitely want to get breakfast freezer meals done. I have some buckwheat pancake mix here that I've been wanting to big batch cook up. So many great 
big batch freezer meals coming coming at you real soon you know I've been on YouTube for nine years now and I've been doing big batch freezer meals that whole time I did some of my first barefoot and pregnant YouTube videos in 2013 when I was pregnant with my seventh baby Daniel and starting that winter when I was postpartum with him I started doing big batch freezer meals here on YouTube and as they say the rest is history I've been doing big batch freezer meals now all these years thank you so much for watching and if you're new here I will pop a playlist up so you can go back you can watch me I believe it's what I've I've cooked in four different kitchens now so you can see how I've cooked up these massive freezer meals for my large and growing family in an old farmhouse kitchen where all we had room at was the kitchen table then we had the forest house kitchen where wow we had some room there and that kitchen was an amazing blessing to me. And then we moved to our current property where we had so many things that were right here, but it had a baby kitchen, but that's okay because mama can handle a baby kitchen and we handled it. We handled our business, didn't we? We cooked in that baby kitchen for over three years. We did 40 big batch freezer meals at a time in that kitchen. I'll tell you, even when my friend Becky from Acre Homestead, when her and her mama came last October to spend an afternoon with me, even Becky was like, whoa, this baby kitchen is so much smaller in real life. And you know how small it looks in, in the videos. And now, of course, we are in, wow, hopes and dreams, my mega mama kitchen. And we are just really, we're able to move our elbows in here. I can be in here cooking up 20 pounds of some kind of, I can be in here cooking up 20 quarts of some kind of something. And I can have seven kids spread out with school books or projects at the big 16 foot table. I mean, we can just, we can be swinging a lot of activities in here and I still have room to film and stir and swallow my spit and fill these bags. So anyway, friend, thank you so very much for having, I don't know, is this our 200th big batch freezer cooking day in all my years on YouTube? Maybe so. Thank you for spending the whole day with me while we got, thank you for spending the evening with me as we got this big freezer cooking time done. And I will see you very soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.